Okay, so we are continuing from where we ended. We talked about the advantages of public operations, then we also talked about the disadvantages. I started privatization, and because I didn't want the video to be that long, we cut that one, and then we are going to now consider privatization, and then sources of finance in this particular video. So I've already told you what privatization is. You said it's a process that leads to transferring the state-owned enterprise into the hands of private person or private individuals so that they, they are, uh, the private person is now going to manage, the private person is now going to control, the private person takes ownership of the state-owned enterprise. Then when the moment they take over, it is no more public corporation. So it becomes a company. If they register it as company, and usually when they buy, they register it as company. So that is for that one. Now, the next thing is the reason why privatization. They said a toad does not run in the data for nothing. That was what uh, Chinua actually said in his things for a part. A toad does not run in the data for nothing. In other words, and your our mothers or our forefathers to say, Obin Ton na poko brie kwa. Obin Ton na poko brie. You know, poko brie, that's the hen. The hen lays eggs. So somebody doesn't sell his hen for nothing. Before you sell your hen, then there's a reason why you are doing that. So what are the reasons for privatization? Why privatization? Why? Why privatization? Very simple, straightforward reasons. The first one, we have already talked about that one, mismanagement. Now listen, the main reason, uh, no matter what you are going to talk about here, one, two, three, four, five, they all boil down to one thing. They all boil down to one thing. And that is what? Inefficiency. There is so much inefficiencies in the public corporation. You know, Fantis have a certain saying. They say, Abana Juma, Wonswa, And that, that is there. So you see, when somebody is working, and once it is Abana Juma, once it is for the government, a lot of inefficiencies. So they are not able to achieve their objective. Hence, privatization. So what we'll be talking about will be the factors that make them inefficient. So the whole thing is about inefficiency. So the government sells. Now, you can ask your parents, maybe all, uh, if you are relatively old, you know what uh, Ghana Telecom Find out why Ghana Telecom, that was public corporation, was sued. And it was sold to whom? When it, it was sold, find out the kind of profit they have been making. Go and find out the kind of profit Vodafone has been making. But when it was Ghana Telecom, they were making losses. And should the government continue to put in more money whilst you are making losses? Certainly no. So, as a result of these inefficiencies, the government will sell these public corporations so that the individuals who are profit-oriented will come in and infuse efficiency, proper management, proper control, so that they can make profit. So the first one is mismanagement. And as I, I've already told you, look at this arrow. And this one is giving you the reason for the mismanagement. Number one, wrong appointment. If you appoint people based on their political affiliation, when there are people who may... You see, when parties come to power, whether MPP, NDC, or whoever it might be, the fact of the matter is that there are some people who contribute towards the uh, party coming to power. They spend their money. So, 
what happens is that when they come, they have to put set people in strategic areas so that they can recoup their investment. That is a fact. Nobody can run away from uh, that. So if you appointed somebody to be a member of board in a public corporation on the basis of pe the person's contribution towards the party, that means you are doing that on political basis. And there are people who have the managerial abilities. You see, at times what even happens is that there may be people who were mining it. In other words, when I say mining it, in other words, you were managing it. Competent people, but because they don't belong to party A or B, when they come to power, they say, go home. Go home. Then they bring in their people who may not be as competent as possible. I can give you practical examples, but I'm not doing politics uh, here. So let's hold on that. You can go and read newspapers and search and find out when this political party came to power, the people they asked them to, when I say this part, this or that political party, I don't mean a particular political party, whether MPP or NDC, they are all the same. So that is for uh, that one. So mismanagement, if you don't bring in the right people, then that is what will uh, happen. They don't have the skills. They know uh, the leaders, those who are at the highest position, so they know nothing can happen to them. The next one has got to do with poor working condition. If you compare the private sector with the public one, and here we are looking at public conditions. You look at working conditions in the private sector, working conditions in the public sector, the two cannot be even compared. And therefore, what happens is that the, those who be working, the workers, the employees in the public corporations, they don't have, they, don't, they lack motivation. And when there is no motivation, morale will be low. When morale is low, it affects productivity. The people are not ready to give up their best. So poor working conditions in the, uh, go to the, visit the public corporation, ask the workers there, find out their working condition compared with the private sector. The private man is profit-oriented, so he tries as much as possible to put in place something that will motivate the worker to also give up his or her best. So poor working conditions leads to uh, low morale and hence it affects productivity. And so that is that. And so if you are not able to achieve the objective, then the government will now invite the private person to take over. The next one, very simple, straightforward, has to do the lack of financial resources, financial money, financial resources. Look at Ghana, the Ghanaian situation now. Now, remember, government subvents. Government puts in money. As even when the, corpora the corporations are making losses, depending on the reason for which they were established, the government still puts in money. By the time comes, the government might not have that money to continue to put in. So he may not have any option than to sell to private individuals. Remember, we have learned that if you are a private corporation, at least you have to break even. And we have learned about what is meant by breaking even. If you are not making profit, a little profit, at least you should uh, not make loss. So there should be zero profit. So when you say, uh, you are breaking the bit because you are neither making profit nor loss. Your total is, uh, revenue is equal to your total expenditure. But if you are if you are making losses continuously and the government doesn't have the financial resources to uh, put into the operations of the corporation, then he may not have any option than to sell. So that is uh, that one. The next one, very simple, straightforward, is direction of International Monetary Fund. International Monetary Fund is simply called IMF. Now, for now, we know the Ghanaian situation, uh, what uh, the government wants IMF to do. The government wants money from IMF. You don't go there and then they will say, 
take their money. They will give you conditions. They will give you conditions. At the time they tell you, cease employment. In other words, you are not supposed to employ anybody. Stop employing people. At times they tell you, do this. So there are conditions. So we, we say there are conditionalities. Before they give their loan to you, now government wants money from IMF. There are conditions that the government must fulfill before IMF will give them the loan. So at times, now we, uh, we are talking about public corporations, why they are privatized, and then we are looking at direction from IMF. So what that we are saying is that there are times if you are going for loan or financial assistance from IMF, the, as a matter of a, a condition, one of the conditions might be that you have to sell this public corporation because it is not making any profit. It is making losses over losses. And if it, you, uh, you, are, you want your economy to grow, you want your economy to develop, you cannot continue to be putting in money into that. So sell to private individual who can bring efficiency. So if you want the loan, then you don't have any option than to sell. So that is for uh, that point. Then the next one, we have already done that one, is government interference. The government interferes with the activities as we have already learned. And therefore, they are not able to achieve their objective. So he himself is interfering with the activities. And as a result of that, they are not able to achieve the objective. And hence privatization. So that is for that one. The last thing we are doing here, but that is that will be the last. We still have something to do. Is the sources of finance very simple, straightforward? We are not going to waste even a minute here. The first one we have already learned that grants and subventions from government. So we have talked about that one. Loans. We have talked about that one. This. Uh, sources to when we are learning the other forms of business organizations, we learn the trade credit, high pitches, leasing, and so on and so forth. So that is for uh, that one. Remember, we didn't mention uh, sales of shares here. What government does is that government sells bonds. Government can sell bonds. Companies will sell shares. Companies can sell debentures. So government debentures, uh, uh, that one is exclusive to companies. Government will sell bond to get a revenue. So that is for that one. So we have finished with our next video. We'll be going to the last uh, one.